How's everybody? I got a barrier, so don't freak you out too bad. Is that better? I'll stay back here. You stay over there, okay? Uh, we're going to continue on in our series today called Modern Family. If I told you that there was something that was toxic coming through in your home, if there was something that was toxic blowing through the vents in your house, what would you do about it? Would you just continue to breathe the air? <laughs> you, we would get out. We would get it fixed. We'd get it looked at. If I told you that there was something toxic that you were eating, that every time you ate it, it killed you a little more, would you continue to eat it? Well, they still make Twinkies, don't they? <laughs> See, but we don't believe that's true about Twinkies, do we? No. No. If I told you that there was some place that you go, that every time you go there, it kills you a little more, it's like toxic to you, would you continue to go there? So today I'm going to talk about something that we can leave here today and we can stop doing this thing that's toxic to our families and to our lives. And then we can go and we can do something different that's going to give life. Like the air you breathe is going to make you more alive. The food you eat is going to make you more alive. And if I tell you that, are we going to go home and do the same things? That's the question, right? Because it does no good to find out that, oh, the air I'm breathing is toxic and the food I'm eating is toxic and the places I'm going, it's toxic and it's killing me. But you know, I really, really like it. So I'm just going to let it go ahead and kill me. Now, very few people are going to do that, right? Very few people are going to do that. Today I want you to leave knowing this one thing, and I'm going to tell it to you right up front, okay? There is not an example that you will find that you've been through, that you've lived in, of a family environment where the harsh, toxic communication doesn't produce a dysfunctional home. And there's not a case you're going to find or come across where a positive, life-giving, life-building communication in a home doesn't make it a great home. How our communication in our home goes is how our home goes. There's a proverb in Proverbs 18.21 that, that says this, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You ever think about that? Blessings and curses are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You realize that in Genesis, the Bible says God created them, man and woman. He created them in His image, right? How did God create the power of the tongue. He spoke and creation happened. He says later in Deuteronomy, he says that life is in these words that I'm giving you today. If you live by them, you will have life and you will prosper. And if you don't, you will have death and destruction. Through the words that I'm giving you today, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And James, and James is James is like this angry preacher. Like James was one of one of uh, he was one of the brothers of thunder, the sons of thunder, right? Uh, James and John were known as the sons of thunder. And James, when the, when the church got going, James was in the church in Jerusalem. And James was hardcore, man. He was, he was hardcore with his preaching and his teaching, and he was told it like it was. So, like, if you really need, like, some aggressive, just butt-kicking, read James. Like, it's going to get right in the middle of all of your business. 
right? And so James says this in James 3. He says, uh, he says like, we, we can put bits into the mouths of horses so they obey us. We guide their whole bodies with the bit that we put in their mouths. He says, he says, look at the ships also. They are large and they're driven by strong winds and they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, the small rudder, the whole ship goes. He says this, How great is a forest that is set ablaze by such a small, small fire. Every fire starts with a spark, doesn't it? I mean, I guess. I'm no scientist. But I think that's, that's true. Our tongues, even though it's a very small member of our body, has such incredible, great power. Our tongues, the way we speak, the way we communicate, can not only dictate the direction of our lives, but the influence of the lives of those around us. It's amazing how strong and how powerful our words are. Life and death, blessing and curse, all flow from the tongue. It's the tongue that takes what is inside us and manifests it makes it known, puts it into the real world, isn't it? Like we can have thoughts and feelings and things going on in our heart, but man, it's the tongue that unleashes what's inside, isn't it? The tongue is extremely powerful. Our words mean so much. And so as our communication flows, so does the modern family. And I see all the time these certain things that happen that are killing our homes, that are destroying our homes. When you look into a dysfunctional family, what do you see? Curses, angry words, yelling, screaming, fighting, devouring, backbiting, lying, manipulation. And what happens to the family that those are the words that are being spoken over it and through it all the time. So I want to look today, and I want to look at, I want to look at some things that are very unhealthy. This is going to be a, a, a I can do this kind of teaching, okay? So you might want to take notes, you might want to write some of this down. One, number one, number one on one of the, the way to have unhealthy and dysfunction in your communication, and we're going to be working on the communication of our home today because life and death is from the tongue, right? So we want to give more life and less, less death, less curse, more blessing, less curse. So number one, the number one thing that I've noticed in, in unhealthy communication in homes is silence. See, I used to be really aggressive person. See, like a lot of you guys are like, used to be, but like, you don't know, man, you don't understand. I'm so tame now. And it's because my aggression was always misunderstood and I always spoke what was on my mind, usually before it hit my mind. You know, like some people have that problem. I used to do that too. But I got, I got beat up a lot. And so instead, I saw all this destruction that my aggression was causing, so I pushed off and did the opposite. And now when I get frustrated, now when I get uh, angry, now when I get, uh, feel like something is wrong, now when I feel like things are going bad, I shut down. Like, I'll go, day, I'll just quit talking to anybody. Silence. Here's the thing about silence. It doesn't do away with it. When you got a fire in here, 
it's going to burn and burn until it gets out here. All right? So silence is not a healthier way. Now, there is a time to where if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all, right? We have to learn the ebbs and flows of communication. But just silence, just the silent treatment. And here's the way it is, really, it's silence out of spot. I'm not going to communicate with you. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to share with you. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. And that's unhealthy communication. And what I've noticed about people who shut every down thing down and suck everything inside and real silent, serial killers. <laughs> I watch all the shows. I've seen them all. They are. He was always so quiet. He never bothered anybody. He was always kept to himself. It's every one of them. So how to not be a serial killer? You can't just push everything down and keep everything silent. You ever walk into a house that's completely silent where the family was just fighting before you walked in and everybody's just... <laughs> There's tension. It's not just the words that bring tension, right? The silence has just as much tension, if not more. We have to learn to communicate, to express healthy. Silence is not good. Number two, verbal abuse. Now, a lot of you guys have lived under this type of environment where it's, where it's constant criticism and verbal abuse and it's, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, and it's all threats and everything is anger and it's threats and it's shouting and it's loud and it's screaming and it's, and it's horrible, isn't it? Isn't that just the worst environment? Where everything you do is an attack. It's, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you're stupid. You know, I can't believe you did that. You're, so, you're such an idiot. This is what I would expect out of you. There's power in those words. You'll never be anything. You're not worth anything. And when we're told that and told that and told that for so long, what do we become? Quite often, kids live up to their expectations. You'll be in prison by the time you're 21. Most likely, voted most likely to go to jail when you get out of high school. Right? These kinds of verbal abuses are not healthy. They produce in our homes dysfunction. They're destructive words. And if your goal is to destroy your family, then those are the words you want to use. If your goal is destruction, then that's the kind of, of language, that's the kind of communication we'll have in our homes. And quite often, those two go together because you have one person that is aggressive and abusive and the other person shuts down. And so what you've got is a ticking time bomb. Right? And we all know what happens when those things go off. We lived, we've seen, we've, we've gone through that, that destruction. Number three words, communication that is harmful and destructive in our homes is manipulation. I hate manipulation. I hate manipulators. I hate people who play head games. I don't, I don't want to play head games. I don't want to be manipulated and controlled and, and led to this thing. Usually in the relationships and in the homes, there's somebody that's a lot stronger, more dominant than the other person. And that person a lot of times uses that, that position of dominance to control and manipulate in the home. And so if our communication is manipulation-based, and a lot of times, man, there's, we, we live in a narcissistic society, don't we? 
We don't understand. A lot of times people who are manipulating don't even realize what they're doing. It's become such a common way of communication that we don't even understand that we are manipulating. And, and it's easy to figure out. If you say something to someone, is what you're saying really what you mean? That's, that's the answer to that question determines whether or not you are trying to manipulate the situation. How are you trying to influence another person? Are you saying what you mean? Are you meaning what you say? If you are not saying what you mean ex explicitly, then you are manipulating. Manipulation is just, it's, it's a horrible form of communication because you can never trust anyone who's a manipulator because you will never know what it is they really think or feel because everything is a manipulation. And it's the ultimate pinnacle of self-centeredness of it being all about me, of your life being consumed by you, your goals, your desires, your wants, how you think things should be, and you manipulate and you control everybody else in every other situation to make it form and fit into what we want it to look like, right? Number four. This is a, this is a tough one for me because... Uh, I never experienced this, this, but I've seen it a lot, and it is uh, erratic and inconsistent behavior. Going up to and including bipolar disorders. Man, if you come home and you don't know what you're going to be dealing with, man, how, how destructive of an environment is that kind of home? The kids come home and they ease in the door because his dad had been drinking. You know, his mom taking her meds. <laughs> our kids, the number one thing our kids need, stability. Man, our kids live in the most unstable world that there has ever been. And our kids need stability. Our families need stability. And, and if we'll cut out the silence and the manipulation and the, and the uh, verbal abuse, if we cut those things out and we level everything out, then it's going to start to be more stable. Our homes are going to be way more consistent. You know, if it's like... Why are, I, I see kids walking around and they're like, if they do something, even if it's an accident, man, they just cower down. Because I don't know if mom's going to go crazy. I don't know if dad's just going to beat me. I don't know what's going to happen. One time yes, one time no. Who knows what's going to happen? And those inst instable homes and those instable communication, all of that it leads to a dysfunction in our homes. And man, when you look, you see all of these things. Don't we see all of these things either in your home, in your childhood, in your friend's house? We see them everywhere, don't we? We know these are the things that break up homes, don't we? Like, we recognize it. Number five. Dishonesty. Dishonesty. I know people that it's just easier to lie than to tell the truth. I know people that lie so much they don't even know what the truth is. Homes, marriages built on lies, manipulation, lies. And when you have lies and when everything's a lie, man, you can't have trust in your house, can you? And if you don't have trust in your house, what kind of foundation do we have? If I can't trust you, I can't depend on you. I, and, and if I can't depend on you, then it goes into the erratic behaviors and it goes into the abuses and all manipulations and all these things, right? It builds up. We have to learn how 
to be honest. Going along with honesty, number six is secrets. We got family secrets. La, 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 lies, man, <laughs> lies. Everybody's got family secrets. Just depends how big they are, you know. Family secrets are, are an amazing force. It's the weirdest, it's the weirdest thing that can, can be in a family. It's like, you realize family secrets and dishonesty start to destroy because you don't know who knows what. I don't know what to say to that person. Do they know about this person? Is this, is this open? Is this whatever? You know, and, and we don't know. And man, there's everything from huge family secrets like, you know, uh, by the way, you've got a son or a daughter. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, things like that, that's, you know, Oh, I got a son that's 40, by the way. What? You know, I mean, you know, it's those kind of family secrets all the way to like, you know, don't tell your mom I wrecked her car. That way she'll think she did it. No, you know, those are good things. Those are good secrets. No. We, we can't have those kind of family secrets. Family secrets, man, they, they cause walls and tension and they start to tear at the fabric of our families. And you're not going to have the type of home, you're not going to have the peace in your home that you want as long as there are secrets in that family. So, so when we look at this, we have silence is, is unhealthy. Verbal abuse is unhealthy. Manipulation is unhealthy. Erratic and in, inconsistent behavior is unhealthy. Dishonesty, extremely unhealthy. Secrets are unhealthy. These are unhealthy environments, unhealthy communications in our homes. And if any one of these are, if all of these are present in your home, your home is teetering on the edge of destruction. You're falling apart. A lot of you guys have been through a destruction in a home, either as a kid or maybe in your first marriage or second marriage or third marriage or fourth marriage or fifth or sixth, seventh or eighth, and you're like still trying to figure out, man, I don't know what went wrong. I don't know what happened. we got to learn to communicate in a way that builds up and doesn't tear down. These words that we speak, whether they're lies or whether they're abuses or whether they're, they're manipulations, these words are power. And they are the rudder that is directing the direction of your home. It's how your homes are being built by the words that we're speaking to our husbands, to our wives, to our children's, children's, <laughs> to whoever you're talking to, right? These things start to destroy. And, and where we have unhealthy communication, we do not have a stable, productive home. But we want to build our homes on a foundation, right? On a solid foundation. We want to build our homes into something. We don't want to, to go through destruction, but we want life in our homes, don't we? And, and we want life in our marriage, don't we? And so when we want these things, we need to know what it is that we're actually pursuing. So here are some foundations that we need to build in our homes. We need to be very intentional, right? Because we know now what the toxic things are coming through our vents in our house. We know the toxic foods that we're eating, right? We don't want to eat those, but what kinds of things do we want to do? Well, what, the first thing we want to do is we want to build a foundation in our homes of positive Communication. Positive communication. A lot of people would say, well, then that's just phony, it's fake. No, that's not true. I found in my life that people respond way faster to words of encouragement than they do to abuse. You realize words of encouragement build up. They cause us to move forward. And abuses causes us to fear and withdraw and back down. So we have to speak words of encouragement. We have to look at our 
kids and tell them how special they are and how perfect they are and how beautiful they are and how that, and how that nothing that they can do will ever make you love them less. You know where we learn that? That's the way our God loves us. But see, we don't get that a lot of times. A lot of times we don't get that God loves us that way, that there's nothing that you have done, nothing that you can do, nothing that you will ever do to make God love you less. You are so beloved. But that's how we have to approach our children. They have to know that. That that causes stability and security. right? We have to lay a foundation that that of love, that there is nothing that you can ever do to make me love you less. Even in discipline, we have to discipline our children in a way that when we communicate our discipline to them, it's in a way of, of building up, not tearing down. When I, when I punish my children, I make sure that they know it's not because I hate them, but because I love them. That I want more for them in their lives. And that this pattern of behavior, this, this pattern of behavior is going to take away the things in their lives that they actually want to accomplish. And when I catch my children lying, when I catch my kids stealing or cheating, or what, they get punished. But they also know that dad doesn't hate me, that he wants better for me. He doesn't want me to end up on this other path. And so they know even in punishment, even in punishment they know I'm grounded, I lost my phone, whatever, that it's because I love them. That it's because I'm trying to build them because I want life for them and that if I didn't care for them at all, I would let them do whatever they wanted to do. Do we realize that judgment, the judgment of God is love? It corrects us. When we experience God's judgment in our lives, it's to take us off of paths that are killing us and put us on paths to life. We think God is, uh, what was I watching, uh, Bruce Almighty. We think God is, an ang- is a mean kid with a magnifying glass and you're the ant, right? He's just doing it because he's mean. Well, that's not the way God is. God's correction, God's judgment is correction to put us on the path to life. And He does it because He loves us. Discipline is positive communication. And no discipline in the home is negative communication. Our kids will tell you that their parents do not care about them because they do not punish them. They do not correct them. They let them do whatever they want to do. Listen to me. Nobody likes cool mom. Nobody likes cool dad. You're a laughing stock. I mean, they're going to do it because, hey, who wouldn't? We would have, right? But when they get with their friends, they're laughing at you. Your joke. Cool mom, cool dad, joke. Parents who really love their kids, discipline their kids. But it's just part of the communication in the home. We cannot tell our kids that they're stupid. We cannot tell our... I mean, even when we get out and just like... You can say, that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And you are smarter than that. Do you understand? Not, you are the stupidest thing I've ever seen, because they'll say, well, the apple don't fall far from the tree. (laughs) Because our kids have sharp mouths. (laughs) But where do they get it? We have to build up. How many of you guys, how many of you guys and compliment your wife man you look good today your hair looks good you know they like that ladies you like that yeah they like it when you notice their shoes I man it's like wow those shoes match each other 
So you don't have to know a lot. <laughs> but I can tell by looking that those shoes match each other. Or maybe they don't. And that's okay too. Your husband loves being told how strong he is in the family. He loves being, your husband loves being told that you appreciate all the work that he does to provide for your family. Your husband loves being told that he's a good father, that he provides well for his kids. Your, your wife loves being told, or your husband, that the house looks good when you come home from work. That you appreciate so much that the dishes were done, man. It's the words that mean so much because, like, I have to do dishes. And, man, when I say I hate something, I hate doing dishes. I hate it. And everybody's like, well, don't you have a dishwasher? That don't count. <laughs> That's not the same. Unless the dishwasher goes to the table, gets it, rinses it, puts it in there, it don't matter. All it does is blow some water on it, and it gets all the credit. We like being thanked, don't we? Does your home have an attitude of gratitude? Are you thankful? One thing, man, I, I try to teach my kids, and man, I teach my kids, I, I believe in teaching by example. I don't sit down and go, now when we go out, you got to say thank you to your waitress, your waiter, you, ever, you know, when people do stuff for you, you say thank you, you don't say, excuse me. No, I don't, I don't just, I mean, they know that, but like, I set the example. You'll never give me tea at my table where I won't tell you thank you. I'll tell my waiter thank you 50 times for any little thing they do. We try to instill into our kids an attitude of gratitude. If somebody does something for you, uh, you thank them. It's the right thing to do is to be grateful for anything that someone else does for you. We like, even though it's like, when you do something for somebody, you don't do it for the thanks. But when they do thank you, it's like, wow, that feels all right. So these are positive. This builds our homes in a positive communication. Instead of being destructive, we can build up in a positive way. Look, look for ways to compliment your kids. Man, you know, when you clean your room, it looks like heaven and like kids don't clean very well do they I mean like they're just not that good at it but like it's real easy to go in after your kid works for three hours cleaning their room and I know they ain't doing cleaning the whole time but it's real easy to go in and go well you missed this 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 that's not it's not really building we need to turn our attitudes in our home into life-giving, positive places, don't we? And man, where this comes out more times than not is when you're tired, when you don't feel good, when you're, when you're just in, everything has gone wrong and you just want to sit down and you don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to share your feelings. We have to learn to build up. I know I'm out of time. <laughs> I'll move fast. Um, our homes need to be a place of fun and humor. Man, a family that laughs together stays together. you got to learn to laugh, even if you laugh at other people in the privacy of your home. <laughs> hey, some people are just funny, man. They need to be laughed at. We, we got to learn to laugh more. We, we, don't, we don't, at our house, man, we don't watch like horror, scary movies. Like, we're, really, we don't, when we sit down, if it's not really funny, man, we don't really sit down and watch it together. Now, I like gangster movies, gangster shows. I like, man, I need some killing because it, other issues. The whole list. Living out issues through television. No, that's not true, man. Y'all are going to get all kinds of bad ideas about me. But, man, we sit down, we watch, we watch stuff that is funny, that makes us laugh. We, we want to watch comedies. We don't go see movies unless they're, you know, usually unless they're 
funny. Like, I like this, the more stupid, the better. I mean, I don't like to put a lot of brain power in anything I'm watching. And I want to, you know, so I just anything that's idiotic, I really enjoy. So we, we laugh. You know, we tell funny stories. We, we make fun of each other. It, but not in an unhealthy way, but we make, we have a good time with each other. We don't push it too far. We are, we're not destructive in it. Our, our uh, you know, our kind of, our kind of love language in our house is sarcasm. And so my kids pick up on that at really young ages. And there's nothing funnier than a sarcastic little kid. Because they, they don't even know how sarcastic they really are. It just cracks you up, so... Uh, but we have to have fun, don't we? Listen, if you're not having fun at home, man, we're going to go somewhere else for fun. Guys nights, girls nights. I mean, those aren't the kind of things that are going to build your home up. I'll tell you the worst thing for your marriage is a girl's night out, a guy's night out. You start having girls nights out, guys nights out, marriage is doomed. Stop it now. I'm just going to be straight. Stop it now. If you're doing that, your marriage is doomed. It's on the rocks if it's not over already. Those things create instability in the home. The kids know about those things. Have fun together. Find something you like to do together. If you like to bowl together, bowl. If you like to watch movies, watch movies. If you like to play golf, play golf. Some people like to do yard work together. (laughs) Whatever floats your boat, man. (laughs) This ain't my deal. It's not my deal. I don't, if, I don't consider work fun ever. <laughs> now, something else I don't consider fun either, and that's heat. So six flags in the summer, no. <laughs> not fun. Not going to laugh, have a good time. The place is hell. <laughs> it, it is the gates of hell. Number three, the number three foundation we have to lay is a foundation of openness and honesty. We have to live open and honest lives. Um, my family just is wide open about everything. If you've ever talked to my mom, <laughs> you know everything already. Like we have no secrets and nothing is suppressed. Like it's all out there. If it's a bad day, it's a bad day all over. If it's a good day, it's a good day all over. There's no secrets. There's no, uh, I know to this day, I know everything's going on with my brothers. They know everything's going on with me. They wouldn't expect me not to know anything that's going on in their lives. We don't have secrets. We have healthy, healthy relationships. I don't have anything to hide from them. They have nothing to hide from me. There is nothing between us and our relationships when we're able to get together. So in an open and honest relationship, uh, you have to be able to, to trust. And so it goes back to, to manipulation and lies. You can't have those things or you're never going to be able to have an open and honest house. Okay, and that kind of leads into the next foundation that you have to have, is you have to have a foundation of conflict resolution. You cannot, write this down, you have to get this. This will destroy your house, destroy your home faster than anything else. Unresolved conflict will destroy your family. You have to have daily conflict resolution. Daily. Why do I say that? Because you're going to have conflict daily. And if you have conflict daily, you better resolve it daily, right? So we have to resolve our conflict daily. Daily, daily. How do we do this? This is where we learn healthy communication. We have to do this from a place of humility. You can't be the aggressor. You can't be dominant and and resolve conflict. You have to go at a place of humility. You have to want the same things. You have to want... if, If we're working on the conflict, the people involved in the conflict have to have the same goals, and our goals are life in our home, right? And if that's not the goal in your house, well, then you're not going to go very far anyway. So we have to learn to resolve conflict. So we have to approach conflict from a place of humility. We have to learn to listen. 
I know it's hard. And everybody thinks they're a good listener. I've never met anybody that says, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a good listener. Uh, everybody's a good listener. What did I just say? Everybody, uh -huh. <laughs> everybody thinks, everybody, everybody hears. But you've got to be a good listener. And here's the thing. Here's the hardest part of conflict resolution is you cannot live offended. If you enter into conflict and you're a very offended person, then all you're going to hear is how wrong you are and how right they are. And you have no grounds for negotiation. Does anybody, everybody knows that like marriage is just code word for negotiation, right? <laughs> and 50 year marriages, master negotiators. That's all it is, they've just done it more. Negotiation. It's coming at a place where I'm not offended. I have, I have opinions, you have opinions. Understanding that her opinions are valid, your opinions are valid. We're not trying to destroy each other, we're trying to resolve the issue, resolve the conflict. And it doesn't matter if it's between parent and kid, between kid and kid, between husband and wife. All conflict has to get resolved, and it gets resolved by that place of humility, that place of, 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 of not being offended, that place of listening, and that place of compromise. You have to give a little. You take a little. You know, you, you may get what, more this time and less next time, and, and, but it's a place where all conflict has to be resolved. And here's the key, guys. This is where we don't, this is where we mess up a lot of times, is we don't finish. We work, but we don't finish. And we walk away not knowing what the resolution was. Good, good positive communication is where we're able to work out our differences resolve them and acknowledge together that this is the resolution that the conflict has been resolved a lot of times it's healthy to take it to the next step and say here's how we avoid this in the future man isn't preventative maintenance way better than conflict resolution yeah we set up and establish family values. Go back a couple of weeks when I was talking to you about your family goals, your family vision, your vision for your marriage. Well, those things should establish your values. And those values need to include things that will protect you against conflict. For example, let me just give you a few examples and I'll be done, okay? For example, we have a resolution in our marriage that we will never talk about divorce. It's not an option for us. So in our marriage, we know that there's no out for us. So we have to resolve everything. That, that's a good one. That's, that's a good parameter to put out there. Okay? We also have this one. We agree we don't let our kids play us off of each other. Now, my, my oldest daughter, she's a master at that. Because she'll come to me and I'll say, what did mom say? And like, she, she don't care. And it's like, that doesn't sound just right. <laughs> you know, we don't let our kids play it. We, we discipline. We are agree, in agreement and discipline. We'll actually tell our kids, I don't know, you're grounded. How long? I don't know yet, because we don't make those rash. You're grounded for six months. You know your kid ain't going to be grounded for six months. You know that. Cause, yeah, because you end up grounded for six months. You know your kid's not grounded for six months. And so those aren't positive words. Say, I don't know yet. You're grounded. Just know that. We go and talk and we come back and say, okay, you're grounded for a week or two weeks or whatever, or you lose your phone or you lose this privilege or that privilege. So we have these, these boundaries. You know, you need, to, you need to set up these preventative things. Uh, the Bible has a great one. Don't go to bed angry. 
Now, you may be up for days. It don't say how long you're going to be up. But don't go to bed angry. This is one of my weak places because I want to go to bed early. So, like, you catch me about 8.30, I'll agree to anything. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what happens. I'll shut down and go to bed. And that's not good. It's not healthy. It's not productive. It's not life-giving. Because then, have you ever gone to bed angry? How do you wake up? Man, you don't just wake up going, oh, man, everything's great. No, you wake up to slamming dishes in the kitchen and cabinet doors. Oh, I was trying to be quiet so you could sleep in. I know. I know how that works. That's a, that's a good one. Set up parameters, though, in your relationship. When you have the same conflict, uh, another, another parameter we have is no girls not, no guys not. Like, you don't get a girls not, you know, out with the girls, guys not out with the guys. Now, I say that they have DLC chicks up here. Well, that's just not off for me. I'm not, that's not a girl not. That's daddy not off. This is me and Ella not. So uh, I enjoy spending time with my kids, so it's not a deal for me. Um, but we have those nights like, there ain't no way my wife's going out to some bar with some friends. I mean, there's, I can, and I can imagine her going, yeah, go ahead, have, have a good time. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, talking about manipulation. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> you, that's manipulation, right? <laughs> you know, they're baiting you into that. So, so these are some parameters we set up. But we have to establish, okay, let's recap. We have to establish a foundation. We need positive communications in our home, right? We have to establish positive communication. And, and man, till we practice this and we become good at it, call each other on it. This is one of the things that was really fun. It turned into a little game, but it'd be like, that's not positive. And justice was the worst because she'd call you on all the time, man. I mean, it's like, Justice, you're whatever. Dad, that wasn't very positive, Dad. <laughs> That's not positive. Turn it into something to where it becomes out in the open, uh, an awareness of it. Positive communication, building up your family, uh, an attitude of gratitude in the home, man. Like, like have, a, have a jar for putting quarters in when you don't say thank you or please or... You know, I mean, do something to make it part of your home, something your kids can participate in. Then you have to establish a safe and secure place for communication in your house. You have to be able to talk. Listen, talking is not yelling. It's not yelling. I mean, there's no, me and Justice are so much alike, and when we butt heads, it escalates like, fast. I mean, it's just electric. But if I didn't yell, she won't yell. When I was able, I'm 40-ish, I'm and, <laughs> and as a 40-ish year old person, you ought to be able to control yourself. You know, 18-year-olds don't always control themselves. 16-year-olds, they're not, no frontal lobe. But you ought to be able to control yourself. And here's what I found. When I controlled myself, it drove her crazy. Because she couldn't yell because there was, no, there was no fight on. When I could control my... Now, I said the same thing. I just didn't yell at her because she'd drive me there. But when you don't let it escalate, when you control yourself, and as an adult, that's what we have the ability to do. We should have the ability to control ourselves. When we don't yell at our kids, our kids don't yell. And they start to learn how to communicate their frustrations. Man, when you're a kid, you're frustrated. You're trying to grow up and break out. Just know that. And we understand how that works. We've got to be able to diffuse that. Safe and open communication, conflict resolution. We need a foundation in our homes where we can resolve all conflict, and we have to resolve all conflict. Can't let it go. Can't just let it sit there. It's poison in our homes. 
It's, to it's toxic. So now we're leaving here today and we know that we can either go home and continue to breathe in toxic air in our homes or we can go home and, and try to speak life because there's power in the tongue. Life and death. Blessing and curse by the words we speak. You guys stand up with me. I'll pray for you.